Hello and welcome to this iMesh video. Everyone is always looking for that one quick trick to make their renders look more realistic, but no one ever seems to mention this. Dust. Isn't that just surface imperfections? Well, yes it is, but the thing is that dust is like a next level surface imperfection. Because you can only see it generally at lower viewing angles, and it's only really sitting at the top of objects. You don't see dust very often on the bottom of an object. Dust is in everybody's houses, and I just find it interesting that nobody ever seems to add it to any of their objects. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this tutorial now. But before I start, I just want people to remember that if you're gonna make a render for a client, they probably want the render to be very clean. So if, you go if you're gonna add dust, only use it as a little bit of a tool to break up some of the completely clean edges. Don't go completely crazy and add dust onto all your objects thinking that it's gonna add realism. The trick is to add just enough that it adds a little bit of realism, but doesn't actually make your scene look like you've just never cleaned. Okay, so the first thing we need is a surface. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna use a metal dog, because if anyone's like me, um, I always forget to clean my metal dogs. You can download this dog from the free section on iMesh. Now this dog does come out of the box with some surface imperfections, but where's the dust? So let's grab this dust texture that I created. I'm gonna put the link in the description. Okay, so let's add a HDRI. So I'm just gonna use uh, my Amish Asset Manager uh, and then I'm gonna find my HDRI, which I like, and I'm gonna use this Artist Workshop, this one, and that's on HDRI Haven. I'm gonna import that. Then I'm gonna go to my objects and I'm gonna import my dog, which I just imported. Um, I'll be using the iMesh Asset Manager for this um, and just, just append that in. Right, next thing I'm gonna do is add a plane. With that one selected, hold down Shift, click on the dog and do Control L and link the material. So they both have the same material. And for this tutorial, I'm just gonna remove the metallic so that it's a bit easier to see what's going on. So now we have a lovely dog in this scene. Actually, let's just make this a little bit darker. Okay, perfect. So now we wanna add some dust. So let's grab the dust texture that which I created. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag the texture straight into Blender. I'm gonna just see that it looks okay. So there we go, we have the texture in Blender. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is actually I'm just gonna enable Node Wrangler. Just go to Edit Preferences and make sure that you have Node Wrangler enabled so that if you add a node, Shift A, S to search and then type in Geometry. If you are to hold down Control and Shift and click, it will then cycle through the output so you can see exactly how they look. So we want the normal output. So now we wanna tell Blender which axis we want to actually see. So we're gonna do a Shift A, S, and then separate RGB and then plug that in there. And now we can see that this is separating based on the color of the normal. So if we hold down shift control, click through, we can see the different orientations that we want. So we want it to be on the top surface. So that is coming out of the blue output. So we can see here the underside is black and the top side is white. And with dust, usually it's mostly visible when you're looking at it from a lower viewing angle. So we're gonna add a little bit of that effect in now. Type in Shift A, S, and type in Layer Weight, and then we can see how this works. And with this node, if you go lower down, the color is more white, but if you go more to the top, it's more black. And you can see that the, the surfaces which are facing the camera are always gonna be darker. So I'm gonna set that to something like 0.34. And then let's add a Shift A, S, and then Mix RGB, and I'm gonna set that to Multiply. And I think I plugged it in this way. And then I'm gonna set this to something like 0.928. So there we go. So now we can see that the dust will be falling mostly on the top surface, but then the surfaces which are directly visible to the camera, they're gonna be a bit darker. So if I go more up, we can see that this plane is more black. If we go down to the bottom, it's more white. So now let's grab our dust texture that we just imported it earlier. I'm gonna click on this node and press Control T to add a mapping node, because we're probably gonna to want to adjust the mapping scale shortly. Then I'm gonna add a color ramp. Well, I'm gonna to try to. There we go, color ramp. And then I'm just going to do control and shift to see how this looks. Then I'm just gonna slide this right over to try to pull out all the whites as much as possible. 
Actually, for now, I'm probably gonna set this to something like three because that looks a bit too heavy. And now what we have is a black and white mask. And we have this mask here. So we want to make it so that the white dust is shining through where the white areas are here. So what I'm gonna do is add a Shift S, mix RGB again. Let's plug this into the bottom one and plug this into the top here and then set that to multiply. And then let's slide this up. So now we can see the black from this mask is being multiplied over the white areas on this part. So now we only have the dust on the top. And you can actually slide this down a little bit if you like to. So if you do want more dust elsewhere, you could just slide this down a little bit and you can see that it's gradually appearing on the underside of the objects too. So if you really want a really dusty object, just slide this down a little bit. I'm gonna put it to 0.98. Okay, and the last thing I wanna do is add a uh, Shift A, S, Math. Plug that in there, set this to multiply. So now if we set this to 50, the dust is really visible. If we set this to one, the dust is less visible. So let's move this over here. This is our original texture. And then I'm gonna make a separate principal BSDF, which is gonna simulate the dust. So I'm gonna do Shift A, S, and type in principled, and plug that in there. And usually dust, I don't imagine it's gonna be very reflective, so I'm just gonna put specular to zero and roughness to full. So now it's gonna be a fully diffused material. And that's gonna be our dust. So we're gonna add a Shift A, S, mix, shader. Plug that one in there, and this one in here. And then we're gonna tell it that this is gonna be the mask that we're gonna to use to tell it where we want the dust and where we want the not dust. So let's plug this one into the factor and plug that in there. So we can see that the dust is not very visible. At the lower viewing angles, for example, on this, uh, on this ground, it is actually visible. And then if we go to the top, it's really not very visible at all. And that's kind of how dust works, but sometimes you can actually see it. And I think that this is just not enough. So I'm gonna set this to maybe like 10. So now we can see that the dust is a lot more visible. And from the top, we can still see some dust. So it's kind of dependent on the object. If you have an object which is very white or a lot lighter, then you might wanna set this some to a higher number so you can still see the dust. Okay, so for this lighter object, I'm even multiplying it by 100, so it's super white. Against the lighter object, it's a bit harder to see, whereas if this was a black object, then that's might, that might be too much. So, you know, you could set this to something like three, and that's probably fine for that. And there we go, we have the node set up, but what I'm gonna do now is clean it all up and, and make a node group. So what I'm gonna do is select all the nodes which are part of the actual dust. So that's gonna be these ones and these ones, and I'm gonna do control G. So now we have created a node group. And if you go to here, you can click back and we can see this here. So when you've created a material, you just simply plug that material into here and then you'll have a dust. But we wanna be able to play with it from outside the node group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in this multiply into here. Grab this output here for the multiply and plug that in here. And that's gonna create an output. So if I come out here, we can see we now have a new output but we can name it as well. So I'm gonna press N, I'm gonna to go to, to group, and I'm gonna set that to dust amount. The next thing we wanna do is also be able to adjust the scale because you, know, you might have an object where 10 looks nice, and I think, to be honest, on this object where the dust is a bit finer, I think that would be a bit better. So we wanna be able to play with that from outside. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a separate, uh, a combine, X, Y, Z, and I'm gonna plug that into the scale. And then I'm gonna take this output here and just plug it into all of these things here. To make this a bit cleaner, what you can do is hold down shift and with the with the right mouse button, click and drag and draw a line. And now you've made a little um, node point. I forgot what it's called. There we go. And I'm gonna call this texture scale. So if we come back out, we go into here, we can set this to one. We have dust that's that size, dust that's a bit finer, and dust that's finer still. And the last slider, which we might wanna play with, and that is to make sure that the dust appears on the lower side of the objects. So I'm gonna set this to black so it's a bit easier to see. Um, if I slide this slider down here, we can see that the dust is appearing on the whole object, whereas at almost one is only gonna be appearing on the top of the top of the object. So that's something you might wanna play with. So let's grab this output here and plug that into this output. 
input. And then I'm going to call that dust z value, for example. So now if we go to this node group and we slide this down, the dust is more on the bottom. If we slide this up, then the dust is going to be more on the top. So I think something like this works quite well. Okay, and there we have it. We now have a node group, which is super easy to use. And I'm just going to call this dust. And there we go. We can play with the values. We can set the dust amount. We can set the dust strength. And that's all dependent on the color of your object, the type of object that you have, um, and how you want the dust to look. Okay, this texture should actually scale, but I think at the larger values, you do start to see some repeating patterns. If it's not working for you, just grab another dust texture online, but that's my own one that I know that you can use legally. Okay, and there we have it. We now have a dust shader and a dust node. So if you want to keep that node group, make sure you save the .blend file, and then you can append it into any scene that you like. Okay, and if you're interested in starting an ArcViz career and making money through ArcViz, then do check out iMesh. We have one of the biggest Blender furniture libraries online, all made in-house by us, so we can quality control everything that we put out. And we basically have everything you need to start making your ArcViz portfolios, to start winning clients, and basically start making money in your ArcViz career. Thank you for watching, and if you could subscribe, that would be very cool.